Here we're gonna look at a pretty simple geometry problem that has a nice generalization. So let's see our setup here. So we've got a circle of radius two centered at O, and then this circle has diameter PQ, and then we're gonna extend that, that diameter to the left two more units with a line segment AP. So that means A, P, Q are collinear. We know that P, Q is length four because it's two radii or a diameter. And then this is length two, so A to Q is length six. Then next what we're gonna do is draw a line segment A, C so that it intersects the circle tangentially. So in other words, it intersects the circle at a single point AC is going to create a tangent line to the circle at that point C. Now, here's a fact that I'm going to say right now, but not stress too much, and that is that angle ACO is a right angle. So it's like kind of well known that if you have a tangent line to a circle, and then you take a radii from the center of that circle to that tangent line, that's going to intersect the tangent line at a right angle. That's not too bad to prove, and I think it's well known. Okay, another thing that we're gonna do is take this point C and drop a perpendicular down to this line segment AQ or AO. And we're gonna call this point B. So that intersects uh, at a right angle. Okay, good. And then our goal is to find the length of this line segment X, which I have there in green. Okay, so now let's get to it. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, which is actually going to take us all the way to this first solution, is notice that triangle OBC is similar to triangle AOC. Okay, so let's maybe talk our way through that. So notice that triangle AOC and triangle OBC, or maybe we should call it BOC, they share this angle right here, which I'll draw in purple. So they share that angle. And then furthermore, triangle OBC has a right angle right here. So maybe we could draw this as a right angle. And then triangle AOC has a right angle right here at vertex C. So they share this purple angle and then they both have a right angle, which means their third angle measure is also equal. And so that means that by the angle, angle, angle theorem, they are similar triangles. But now that they're similar triangles, we can set up a nice proportion in terms of the length of their sides. And the proportion that I'm going to want to set up goes like this. We're going to have OA over OC. So the length of those two line segments equals OC over OB. Now we know most of those measurements and the one that we don't know involves our goal X. So that's really nice. So notice that we know that OA is four and that's because it is the distance from A to P, which we know is two. And then it's a radius of the circle, which we also know is two. And then OC, well, that's a radius of the circle, so that's going to be 2. So we know that equals OC, which is 2. And then let's look at OB. So notice OB is going to be a radius of the circle minus this unknown X. So we could write this as 2 minus X, like that. So here we have 4 over 2 is equal to 2 minus X. But, you know, by cross multiplying and uh, simplifying this equation, this is pretty easy to solve. So notice that's going to give us 8 minus 4x equals 4. But then that gives us negative 4x equals negative 4. In other words, x is equal to 1. So here we have the length of this line segment, which we were going to, going for, is length 1. Now, this is not super interesting in its own right, but what I want to notice here is that if I take the length of this line segment A to B, so that means that the length of the line segment AB is equal to three, and I want to compare that, so compared with the length of the line segment AP and the length of the line segment A. Q. So notice we know the length of the line segment AP is equal to 2. 
So let's go ahead and write that in there. And the length of the line segment AQ is equal to two plus two plus two is equal to six. So the real question here is what's the relationship between three, two, and six? And the really nice thing is that is the harmonic mean. So let's recall that the harmonic mean, well, I'll let you guys look up the definition, but suffice it to say the harmonic mean of six and two can be written like this. So it's gonna be two over one half plus one sixth. So that's the harmonic mean of two numbers. Notice you take the reciprocal of the sum of their reciprocals, and then you multiply by how many ever numbers you're taking um, the harmonic mean of here. But now notice that we can simplify this. Maybe we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by six to simplify the fractions. That's gonna give us a 12 in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we'll have three plus one, which is equal to four. So what we have here is the length of this segment AB is the harmonic mean of this line segment AP and AQ. So this gives you a nice geometric construction for the harmonic mean of two numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up this simple calculation, put some arbitrary numbers in here, and we'll see this happen generally. Okay, so I've added some generality to my picture. So I've made the distance between A and P equal to little a, and the distance between A and Q equal to little b. And what we observed via example on the last board was that the distance from A to B was the harmonic mean of those two distances, so A, P, and A, Q. And so if this is true in general, then that means this distance from A to B should be the harmonic mean of little a and little b. So let's go ahead and make sure that's true. So I filled in some more parts of this. So notice if we have this big distance right here is b, then that means the diameter of this circle is b minus a, which makes the radius of this circle b minus a over 2. So that's good to know. And now we can use the same argument that we did on the last board via similarity of triangles to get this proportional. Uh, now we use the same argument that we did before. Now the argument that we used before still stands. So we have the similarity of these two triangles. And that implies the proportionality of these line segment lengths. But now these have different values, kind of more general. So let's go ahead and input in our new values into this uh, proportionality equation. So we have OA. So notice O to A is going to be a radius of the circle plus A. We know the radius of the circle is B minus A over two. So we've got B minus A over two plus A. So again, that's OA. And then we've got that's over OC. So let's notice that OC, well, that's a radius of the circle, which we just know is that B minus A over two. So let's write that as B minus A over two. And then we have that is equal to OC, which is another B minus A over two over OB. But notice OB is going to be a radius of the circle minus X. Just like it was before, it was two minus X, but now it's B minus A over two minus X, like that. Okay, good. Now, maybe we can get rid of some of these denominators in the denominator and numerator. In other words, these complex fractions. We can do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator on both sides of the equation by two. I think that's just gonna simplify it a little bit. So let's see what that gives us. So over here in the numerator of the left-hand side, we're gonna have B minus A plus two A, so that's gonna be B plus A. So that's what that reduces to. The denominator reduces to B minus A. And then over here, we've got a B minus A. And then that is going to reduce to B minus A minus 2X. Now what I want to do is maybe cross multiply so that we can simplify this a little bit. So let's see, cross multiplying this up here, I'm going to think about this B minus A being grouped. So that's gonna give us b squared minus a squared. That's what we get by multiplying b plus a times b minus a. And then minus two x times a plus b. Again, that's the minus two x part. 
And then we have that's going to be equal to b minus a times itself. In other words, b minus a squared, which is going to be b squared minus twice a b plus um, a squared. So now we can simplify this a little bit. So notice that this b squared is going to cancel this b squared. And then we can maybe add an a squared to both sides of the equation. And that's going to give us something like this. We'll have minus 2x times a plus b equals, so that's going to be uh, 2a squared minus 2ab. Maybe we factor out a 2a. So we can factor a 2a out of that, and we're left with a minus b. Now we can do a couple of little simplification steps, like maybe we'll take this 2 and divide it out with this 2. And then next, we'll take this minus sign, turn it into a plus sign by swapping this um, a minus b to b minus a, which b minus a is a little bit more natural here because we see that b is larger. But now we can distribute this a through to both of these terms and then divide by a plus b, and that's going to leave us with x equals, so it's going to be a b minus a squared over um, a plus b. Again, just distributed that a through and then divided by the a plus b, so we've got this value of x here. But notice this value of x is not super interesting in terms of this harmonic mean observation that we made before. We really want to know the length of this line segment A, B. So capital A, capital B. So notice the length of this line segment capital A, capital B is equal to A plus X. Because we go distance A and then distance X. So let's see, we can give those a common denominator pretty easily. So that's going to be a squared plus a b over a plus b. So notice this bit right here is just equal to a. I just multiplied a by a plus b over a plus b. And then here we've got x, which is um, a b minus a squared over a plus b. Okay, so now that we've got common denominators, we can combine those. Notice the a squareds cancel, and we're left with twice a b over a plus b. Maybe this is a nice way to end it, but since we're going for this harmonic mean thing, let's go ahead and multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 over a b. Notice that leaves us with 2 over 1 over a plus 1 over b. But that, that's exactly the harmonic mean of this line segment AP with the length of this line segment AQ. So let's go ahead and write that down. So harmonic mean of AP and AQ, which I think is a nice result.